and welcome into Red Hawk Football Weekly. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, Miami Red Hawk Football Mid American Conference East Division champions after Kent State came from behind and defeated Buffalo last night. That, of course, a night after Miami defeats Bowling Green 44 to 3. Red Hawks will take on the Akron Zips this Wednesday night, 7 30, here at Jaeger Stadium. Joined by head coach Chuck Martin and coach, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you know, uh, you knew going into the week uh, you would you would need to win and either win next week or have Kent State beat Buffalo and uh, in an exciting game uh, they did just that and Miami is the Mac East champions heading to Detroit congratulations yeah obviously after we beat OU felt like we we're in great position you're right. up two with three to play um, and you have Buffalo and OU that you got your magic numbers too with both of them and but it's nice to have a relief. I mean, I think we're going to win it next week, but yeah. it's nice to, trust me, I was very happy when <laughs> Western won in overtime and Kent State kicked the last second field goal and a crazy great comeback and two standard MAC football games, yeah. one in overtime, one comes down the last kick. So just again, shows how hard it's been to win in this league this yeah. year. Uh, we're the only team with one loss in the whole league. Central and Western have two losses and all the other good teams have already three losses with two games to play. So it's just been a really, really competitive, good football league this year. We've been able to find ways to win all these close games and some, somehow steer clear of steer clear of everybody sitting with three losses. Yeah, and with two to go, you win the uh, secure the championship. The West, uh, yeah, there could be four teams wind up five and three over there right yeah. now. And it, it could be a mess over there. So you have to wait to see who you'll be playing in that championship game. Yeah, and we know Western's in the driver's seat. Western's going to have to go to Northern Illinois and beat Northern Illinois right. on the road, which Northern Illinois just had a great win over Toledo yep. at Toledo. So, and again, it's just week to week who beats who. So, um, most of the games come down to the wire, so there's still a lot to be cited, but obviously Western's one, one win away from getting to where they want to be. Your game on Wednesday night did not come down to the wire after a slow start, uh, 27 second quarter points uh, by your team and uh, a big 44-3 victory. And uh, really, uh, the defense played throughout. I mean, all 60 minutes, the defense dominated the Falcons and special teams. Again, we talk about it every week, every phase of the game contributing to the win. Yeah, no, it was another really nice team win. And yeah, slow start for our offense. Yeah. Um, obviously, you throw a pick on the first play and, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, everybody's thinking, are they going to have a letdown? Are they looking ahead? Are they, you know, coming off a huge win on the road at OU? And that first play game, you throw a pick and yeah. you think, okay, that's what everybody's worried about. You know, we're not going to, we're not going to be as sharp today. But then again, defense gets a great start. Mike Brown makes a great read and gets a pick and gets some nice blocks and goes 79 yards for a touchdown. And, you're like, okay, that's that's a good it turned yeah. out to be a good start, you know. Yeah. And then put us on another short field with another turnover, we get another stop and they miss a field goal. So ten three at the end of the first, but then our offense scored twenty seven points yeah. in thirteen plays and they gained two hundred and sixty yards. So once I said once they got it cranked up, it it was full steam and again, standard our offense this year it was Jalen Bester, it was James May, it was Jalen Walker, it was Andrew Homer, it was just different Tyree Shelton. It was a different yeah. player all the time stepping in and we made a ton of chunk plays again on offense we got we got the three turnovers Trey Banks comes away with two big interceptions yeah. you know and we, we win the turnover battle we win the chunk play battle and it was nice to get all the backups in in the second yeah half. and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on but there were a lot of big big plays in that first uh, half and we'll go to the highlights and talk about those we'll show the bad first the first play from scrimmage this is actually a good play they put pressure on Brett tap the ball and the Falcons are in business at the uh, Miami 36 but Four plays later, here is Mike Brown. Yeah, great job on fourth down. Uh, and then great, great job out in front. A lot of guys leading the way out in front. And Mike Brown goes 79 yards for a touchdown. Uh, obviously, remember his huge pick six against Buffalo, which, yep. which really turned that game around. And obviously, that's the game-changing play in this one. They're trying to get momentum early on the road, have an opportunity on a short field. Mike reads it. You can see him breaking long before the throw there. Uh, great shot here in coverage. A couple guys breaking in zone. Then great job out in front. You can see Koss and Lonnie Phelps gets a huge block out in front, and Mike does the rest. So, uh, been an unbelievable defender all year long for us, and obviously a huge play. This is the end of their next drive, and special teams contributing. Uh, this is a short 27 yard field goal for Sam Sloman, makes it a 10 3 football game as he boots it through. Bowling Green would get in the red zone, but Needham misses the 42-yard field goal, and but they get the ball right back on this play. Yeah, no, and again, we didn't, we've got a defensive score, and we've been on a couple short fields, and you know, again, you're gonna make mistakes. We get beat on a block guy, and Bowling Green deserves credit. They got good players too, and they make a play. Once again, the defense holds them to field goal, and uh, Brody got incredible pressure on both of these kicks. He almost blocked both of them, 
and really affected the kick and they missed two short field goals. And that's when the offense really started taking off after they missed field goal by Mason Lawler. This is Jack Sorensen for 19. Yep. And again, this we're going to see it's going to be a different player throughout every oh, yeah. yeah. Sorensen for 19, a good RPO on a little bit of bang post, good read by Brett, good throw, good catch. That sets you up first and 10 at the 35 yard line and Andrew Homer finds the seam and finds the end zone here. Yeah, and fake the swing pass, get the DB to bite, then we hit Homer, and then Homer gets, does a great job of protecting the football late with the guy trying to strip and getting the ball in the end zone for a 35-yard touchdown. Great job of uh, dragging the Bowling Green Falcon player with him. You'll get another look at it here as Andrew Homer, and again, the play fake, bringing up the safety, and Homer is wide open to take it to the house from 35 yards out, taking a defender with him. Another look at it here as the touchdown will give Miami a 17 to three lead in that second quarter. And the defense again gets the ball right back. First of yeah. two for Travion Banks. Great read by Trey Banks. Read the route, knew where it's going, sunk underneath the deep flood. Uh, quarterback saw him jump the flat route, but Trey was just moving the flat. He was kind of baiting him and then he sunk underneath uh, the deeper throw. Quarterback thought it was wide open. Trey knew it was coming the whole time. Cut right in front of it, huge interception, sets the offense up on a short field. And this is something your defense did all night as uh, Loy was looking to throw. They were either covered or he was going to throw a pick and, and not see the Miami defender. Then you go down the field uh, again, Sorensen with a big catch and uh, in between two defenders. Yeah, throwing a tight window. Jack does what Jack does. Jack, yeah. makes, Jack makes hard plays. He's done it his whole career. Um, not an easy catch here. Great concentration. And then he's trying to get the ball. Uh, Jalen Bester, the benefactor from one yard out, going Walter Payton over the top there. Yeah, 24-3 is the uh, score after that touchdown, and very Payton-esque. You'll get another look at it here from the end zone. As You, do, you don't see this too often uh, these days, people going over the top. It's usually a cloud of dust underneath there, but uh, yeah, Jalen does the job for Miami, and it's 24-3. Next Miami possession from... Uh, at, with 4.11 to go, Tyree Shelton makes a great read to bang it to the outside. Yeah, really good push up front. We dented the left side of their defensive line, allowed Tyree to get a good read and bounce it for a chunk play. And there's the chunk play. Jalen Walker makes a great catch, 60-yard score. Again, you get your running game going. We talked about early in the year when we weren't running as good. You get your running game going. Our play action game is very good. Again, another contributor, Jalen Walker's had a big year for us. Beautiful throw by Brett, hits him dead in stride. Mm -hmm. Uh, puts a lot of pace on it. Let's give Jalen plenty of time to run in the end zone. Next uh, Bowling Green drive. This is third and 10. And again, your Miami defense putting pressure on Loy. And again, this is what I was talking about. Happened all night long. He just had nowhere to throw the ball. Brings up a uh, fourth and long and they don't convert. You get the ball back. And then uh, right at the end of the half, 59 yards for Jalen Bester. Yep. Again, chunk runs have been coming in, in, in big ways for us. And we're, we're, we're gashing people up front. Our, our receivers are doing a really nice job covering up back end people, just like we showed last week. And then obviously Jalen and Tyree and Davian and the boys are, are doing a great job. So a uh, huge hole, obviously, here. Good read by Jalen. Then again, downfield people got guys covered up and, and Jalen Bester showing his crazy speed. And you can see the last three weeks, he's got his legs back. He missed time with injury, right. came back. He wasn't himself. He's getting his explosive back and it's showing in all these big plays. 37-3 is the score at the half. We'll come back, talk about the second half and also talk about the Akron Zips a little bit later on when we come back with more of Red Hawks Football Weekly. Run with us in the unstoppable John Deere Gator XUV 835 and be prepared to go the extra mile. Because when others take rain checks, we take the wheel. With three wide seating, heat, and AC, this is the coolest, most comfortable Gator yet. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Run with us and get $500 off your very own Gator XUV 835M at Koenig Equipment. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly is brought to you by Courtyard Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. All right, here we go. In three, two. 
And welcome back into another edition of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Miami 37-3 at the half against Bowling Green. As we talk a little bit about the second half of that football game, head coach Chuck Martin joins me as Miami defeats Bowling Green 44-3 this past Wednesday. And uh, it, it gave you an opportunity to do something that you hadn't had a while. And that, that's get a lot of young guys in that football game. You're up 37-3 at the half. You play your starters for a series, maybe two, and then, then you let the young guys take over. Yeah, no, it's nice. And again, obviously, you have 37 three and a half, then a lot of pressure and uh, came out. We got to stop. We got to score. Um, drove the ball down, hit a hit, hit James Mann a post, and we hit Quinn Hardy and um, get to 44 three. Then you basically clear, clear your bench and play your twos and eventually get some of your threes and get some of your young guys in. And again, crazy valuable opportunity for those kids to get better. Crazy valuable opportunity to get some in game experience, not just guys that practice yeah. all the time. And then even some guys that are down on the scout team got some game reps, right. which again, you're trying to develop kids. You don't have many opportunities in Division One to do that, um, but that, that was a great opportunity. And they did a lot of nice things. Our defense, our number two defense, they left their starters in the whole game on offense. Right. Our number two defense really, really did some nice things against against a tricky offense to try to defend. They did, and some of those guys that got in, true freshmen that, you know, fall into that four-game category that they can get out there and play, and that's, 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 that's extremely valuable. Yeah, no doubt. It's, it's and again, we we're talking who, who's got what left, you know. Mm -hmm. He's got three, he's got two, he's got one. So, but again, taking advantage of the opportunity of the lopsided score and letting those kids play and letting them get the experience in, in the four-game rule, Again, I think it should be a 12-game rule and let them play every game. I don't know why we wouldn't, but yeah. we still try and take advantage of four-game rule and get some of those kids' experience. Yeah, there, there weren't a whole lot of big highlights in that second half, but we'll take a look at what we have here, and it begins with that 47-yarder to James May. Again, great job, James, running by some good, ridiculous throw by Brett. I mean, James had him beat by, by about a half a yard, and that ball's right on the money. And, uh, again, James has made, as a true freshman, a lot of huge plays uh, in, in this run to a Mac East title. He's been a big part of it. Great protection. And uh, again, you see just a perfect ball from Brett. And again, he's in the top five in the country for freshmen for yards per catch. And uh, just a great route. And again, the uh, defender had no chance at that one. Put a beautiful, uh, put it where only James May was going to get it, did Brett Gabbard. And a great advance of the football. And then from five yards out, Quentin Hardy with the catch. Yeah, nice little play action. Good little block by Sorensen on the perimeter. Uh, Nice throw by Brett, easy score. And again, you're up 37 to three. We're nervous coaches. You're, you're trying to get that first score. Yeah. And just, yeah, I, that's when I kind of felt like, okay, we got this. I know probably Bales felt like that at halftime, but we're still, <laughs> we're still trying to put another nail in the coffin, I guess. 44-3 at that point. And here's the second pick by Travion Banks. Yeah, another really good play. Knew the route was coming. Steps in front, uh, makes a great break. They, they ran a little double post flag there. And he did a great job rerouting one of the posts, came off rerouting the post and, and, and steps in front of the flag. So he really defended two guys in one place. So we lost Mike Brown early in the game and Trey Banks came in for him. And obviously Mike had a pick six and then Trey has two picks. So our rover position had three picks in the football game and, and obviously huge, huge determining the outcome of the game. And did a great job all night long. And I'll talk to you about that. This is the final play of the game, uh, excuse me, for Bowling Green uh, pass incomplete and this is uh luke bolden that, that does a nice job yeah. there uh and this is the final play of the game here excuse me and uh the uh, celebration begins and that again your defense doing what they've done all night long and that's the twos some of the threes out there yeah. against their one offense as uh, miami gets the 44-3 victory and uh the defense we talked about playing well all, all night long the three interceptions but uh loy never had a chance to get comfortable back there i mean it didn't matter who was in there even even if he had time to roll around and i think there was one play he had like five seconds back there nobody was open downfield yeah no really good job coverage um the biggest improvement probably of our football team from last year to this mm -hmm. has been our pass defense. If you, mm -hmm. you just look at the stats, sure, it's, sure. It's, it's not even close to where, where we were a year ago uh, from yardage to percentage completion to efficiency to interceptions to touchdowns. Our, our pass defense has been really, really, really good, even though you ran the ball very, very well against us, but they couldn't throw it at all on us. Yeah. So our back end guys, and then like you talk about every week, Bake, our pass rush, it always starts with that. And our ability to harass quarterbacks, whether whether we've gone in the blitz, but we don't blitz a lot, we've done it a lot with just the four down kids. And, and our defensive line has created that since JT Jones left, we didn't have the opportunity to just kind of rush for and get after a quarterback. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure JT's watched some games, been smiling with what the down four kids have done and as far as putting pressure on the quarterback. And 
that's where a lot of these interceptions come from, mm -hmm. quarterback making bad choices under duress. Yeah, 11, uh, 11 completions for Grant Loy, and you hold his leading receiver, Quentin Morris, four catches and 13 yards. So, I mean, yeah. it's just the way that uh, this defense played all throughout that game and has been playing all throughout the season, and uh, just a great win for Miami. And again, with the, with the Kent State win last night, uh, Miami is the MAC East champions. Two games to go. The next one is against the Akron Zips this Wednesday night at Jaeger Stadium. We'll come back and talk about the Zips when we return with more of Red Hawk Football Weekly. Stay tuned. This segment of Red Hawk Football Weekly has been brought to you by Courtyard by Marriott Hamilton, conveniently located just miles from Miami University. Welcome in our final segment of Red Hawks Football Weekly for this week. Steve Baker here as Miami will entertain the University of Akron Zips this Wednesday night at Jaeger Stadium. 7.30 kick will be on the air. Myself, Terry Bridge, Randy Hollowell will have the action for you beginning at 6.30 with the Knowles of Oxford Tailgate Show. Head coach Chuck Martin rejoins me and uh, coach the Zips looking for their first win. They've, uh, they've really had that struggle and, and from your first year here, you know what that kind of struggle is like and what they're going through. Yeah, the last two weeks uh, there's two really good coaches at BG and at Akron and they're yeah. going to do a good job but trust me if anybody can empathize with what they're you know what what BG's gone through at times this year and certainly what Akron's gone through trust me yeah. I, I I totally understand and again there's going to be better days ahead they're both really good coaches and they're going to do it the right way but if, if you do it the right way it typically takes a little more time yeah. and, and and they're going through some struggles they've obviously statistically they've struggled on offense that I've watched them on defense all year they're not bad on defense right. at all they have a right. solid Mac defense and they've defended They've defended well and defended really well at times. So we're, we're we're certainly we're certainly not going in this game thinking like there's they have no parts. And right, we right. know their quarterback. You know their quarterback. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is, is you know he struggled and they've struggled as a unit offensively. But we know how capable he is. Two years ago, um, he led them to the MAC championship and right. you know beat OU throwing for 300 yards in the first half. So we know how capable he is. We know how strong their defense has played at times this year. So uh, like every other week, we're not they're their Mac football team, anything can exactly. happen. And, uh, they would love to get their first win at our expense, and they would yep. love to think that we're now really sitting fat and happy with that we're back East champs right. and we're partying and we're not even worried about this, but we're going to come ready to play and try to play our best football. Well, and you were asked about it in, in the press conference. You know, you're, you're the Mac champs. you got two games to play. Do you rest players? And uh, I liked your response. Yeah, no, we're going to keep trying to get better. Like yeah. we, we need to keep getting better. We're not like I said, if we if we were five and one and had five blowout victories and the world like we we know there's there's things we've done really well this year and you and me we've seen improvement even like the last yeah. few weeks like our offense is becoming explosive we weren't right. explosive for about six weeks right we we did some nice things on offense but it was a grind and then now we're making these explosive plays and that's execution that's not you don't make the explosive pass or run without 11 guys executing right. and our offense is and and we're going to keep trying to build on that and there's things defensively that that we need to keep working on there's things in the rst has been great but there's still things ST that we you know our, you know we gave up a couple kick returns last week. We got to show up our kickoff team, you know. Mm -hmm. So there there's things that we know we need to get better on. We got two weeks before we're going to have to go play in a MAC championship game. We want to be a better football team then than we are right now. We're certainly capable of doing that. Coach, thanks and best of luck uh, this Wednesday. And again, congratulations. Thanks, head coach Chuck Martin, joining us on this week's Red Hawk Football Weekly. Again, the University of Akron Zips come out to the game. 7:30 kick at Jaeger Stadium as the Red Hawks look to continue the winning streak and also sweep the East and beat every team in the East Division with a victory over the Akron Zips. Again, 7.30 kick. If you can't make it to the game, we'll have it for you on the air at 6.30 along the Miami Sports Network. For head coach Chuck Martin, I'm Steve Baker. Thanks for watching Red Hawks Football Weekly.